going to start a new topic that is a pollination. So, what is pollination? Transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma or ovule that is called pollination. What is pollination, ma'am? Transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma or ovule that is called pollination. But my question, when this pollination takes place? Yes, uh, when it will take place and in which members of the plants it will take place? So when this pollination takes place already in first chapter reproduction in organism we discussed about the pollination and when it takes place and all the things. Yes, when it takes place. So the process of pollination takes place prior to fertilization. Prior is nothing but before fertilization. When this pollination takes place, ma, the pollination takes place prior to fertilization. Prior to fertilization. Yes. In which members of the plants it will take place before fertilization or prior to fertilization? In the members of gymnosperms and angiosperms. In which members it will take place, ma? In the members of gymnosperms and angiosperms it will take place prior to fertilization. But my question, how many types of pollination is there? So there are two types of pollinations. How many types of pollination, ma? Two types. What are those two types? The first one is direct pollination. Which one, ma? Direct pollination. And the second one is indirect pollination. How many types of pollination, ma? Two types. What are those two types? Direct pollination and another one is indirect pollination. Yes. What is the direct pollination and what is indirect pollination? In which members we can observe the direct pollination and in which members we can find out or observe indirect pollination? Yes. Now, direct pollination. <coughs> the pollen grains which are transferred directly to the micropyle of the ovule that is called direct pollination. What is the direct pollination? The pollen grains which are transferred to the micropyle of the ovule directly that is called direct pollination. Yes, in which members we can find out this direct pollination? In the members of gymnosperms. In which members, ma? In the members of gymnosperms we can find out direct pollination. You may get one doubt, sir, how it is a direct pollination? See, in the members of gymnosperms, the ovules are not surrounded by ovary, sorry, ovary walls. Ovary walls are not uh, present. That's not uh, so, whatever the ovules which are present in the gymnosperms, those are naked ovules. So that uh, the released pollen grains directly reach the micropyle of ovule. Hence, this type of pollination is called uh, direct pollination. So, what about the indirect pollination? <coughs> See, indirect. So, indirect pollination is observed in the members of angiosperms. Where we can find out indirect pollination? The indirect pollination is observed in the members of angiosperms. Since the ovules are enclosed within the ovary. Where ma? In case of angiosperms, ovules are enclosed within the ovary. Hence, this type of pollination is a indirect pollination. Why sir? So, after reductions of the anther, the released pollen grains do not reach the micropyle of the ovule directly. Why? Because the released pollen grains reach the stigma, there it will germinate. After germination, it can produce the pollen tube. So this pollen tube travel through the style right now. And then finally, it reaches the micropyle. That's what it is called indirect pollination. Why it is indirect pollination? Since the ovules, right now, since ovules of the angiosperms are enclosed within the ovary because of that reason, it is called indirect pollination and released pollen grains do not reach the micropyle of the ovule directly. It will land on stigma and germinate and produce the pollen tube. 
then this pollen tube reaches the micropyle of the ovule hence it is called indirect pollination and after that we will discuss two more things so one is cashmogamy and another one is cleistogamy so another two term cleistogamy and cashmogamy and cleistogamy so my question what is cashmogamy the flowers which are open and their reproductive organs are exposed hence those flowers are called cashmogamous flowers and the pollination in them is called cashmogamy so what is cashmogamy ma so the flowers which are open and their sex organs are exposed hence right now those are called cashmogamous flowers pollination in them is called cashmogamy the majority of the flowers right now they can bloom or they can open so which one calyx and the corolla then the sex organs like androecium and the gynoecium is exposed hence those flowers are called cashmogamous flowers and the pollination in them is called cashmogamy so what about cleistogamy the flowers which never open those are called cleistogamous flowers pollination in them is called cleistogamy what is cleistogamy ma the flowers which never open the flowers which never open those are called cleistogamous flowers and pollination in them is called cleistogamy can i give an examples yes example viola comalaina streptocarpus oxalis these are all example for cleistogamous flowers what are cleistogamous what is cleistogamy the flowers which never open those are called cleistogamous flowers pollination in them is called cleistogamy example viola comalaina streptocarpus oxalis this is about i hope you understood what is pollination types of pollination and another two types of terms so cashmogamy cleistogamy examples so now based on the source of pollen grains pollination is of three types based on which criteria based on the source of based on the source of pollen grain pollination is of three types so autogamy autogamy and the second one is the gaitanogamy and the third one is allogamy sir xenogamy uh, it is also called allogamy <coughs> yes autogamy autogamy is also called self pollination autogamy is also called self pollination <coughs> so based on the source of pollen grain pollination is of three types autogamy or self pollination the gaitanogamy and the xenogamy now the first one is autogamy so what is this autogamy <clears throat> transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower that is called autogamy or self pollination what is this autogamy ma transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same plant or same flower transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower that is called autogamy or self pollination but my question is in which plants other unisexual plants or bisexual plants or monoecious plants or dioecious plants in which plants we can observe the autogamy or self pollination in bisexual plants 
In bisexual plants, we can find out autogamy or self-pollination. Another name, monoecious plants. In which members we can find out autogamy? The autogamy is observed in the members of bisexual or monoecious plants. That's about autogamy. But here, <coughs> so previously we discussed two terms. One is a <coughs> Cashmogamy and another one is clistogamy. The majority of the bisexual plants exhibit autogamy. <coughs> See, here in some members of the plants, both the male and the female reproductive organs mature at the same time. As a result, they facilitate self pollination or autogamy. In some members of the plants or in some bisexual plants, both the male and the female reproductive organs show the synchrony. At a time so that they facilitate which one self pollination or autogamy. So, for example, and uh, there are some plants they never open their flowers, hence, those plants or those flowers are called clistogamous flowers. What are clistogamous flowers? The flowers. Clistogamous flowers. The flowers which never open those flowers are called clistogamous flowers. But my question is, in these clistogamous flowers, pollination will take place? Yes or no? If it is yes, each type of pollination takes place? That is my question. And uh, whether these plants are able to produce the seeds or not? If it is yes, how they can produce the seeds in the absence of pollinators? Why there is why the pollinators are absent, absent in these plants or in these flowers? Because the flowers never open. Flowers never open means these flowers do not attract any insects. So we know that insects are the major pollinating agents in majority of the flowering plants. We know that. So but here these plants never open their flowers yet they are able to produce the seeds. But how they can produce the seeds without the pollination? Now we will discuss. See, the clistogamous flowers. What are clistogamous flowers? The flowers which never open those flowers are called the clistogamous flowers. But in these clistogamous flowers, which type of pollination takes place? Always autogamy. Or, one more term, which one? Self-pollination. Autogamy or self pollination. Yes, we know that. So, can you give an example for clistogamous flowers? We know that uh, viola. It is also called a common pansy. Right now, so in these plants, the flowers never open. Yes, but how they can facilitate self pollination in these plants? Uh, both the style, right now, so that means. Uh, Anther and stigma shows the maturity same time or at a time so that uh, whenever anther reductions uh, the released pollen grains reach the stigma of the same flower as a result it facilitates self pollination right now so after pollination what will happen we know pollination pollination followed by fertilization after fertilization post fertilization events and finally it can produce the seeds even see the testogamous flowers Right, ma. So the plants which undergo continuous self pollination are clistogam. The clistogamous flowers. Right, now, So in these flowers, there is no pollinating agent yet. It can produce the assured seed set. It can produce assured seed sets because which pollination ma? Self pollination. This is about autogamy. <coughs> this is about which one ma? Autogamy. Now we will discuss about what are the advantages and the disadvantages of autogamy. Shall we start advantages and disadvantages of autogamy? <coughs>